Kerry Martin, head football coach, Marion High School, Marion, Illinois. I'm going to share with you today uh, a little bit something about our practice schedule, the way we organize practice. Uh, the longer I coach, which has been 23 years now, the more I believe the way you practice has a huge impact, maybe has the biggest impact on the outcome of the games on Friday. So I'm going to share with you just what we do and what works for us as far as practice schedule and, and uh, practice organization. And maybe you can pick up something that I hope that can help you and your program as well. We have uh, a period of time at the beginning of practice we call pre-practice. Pre-practice for us is just techniques and fundamentals. You know, as a spread team, we do a, some drills, noose drill, pat and go drills, some ball catching drills. Uh, our defensive players rotate through some tackling stations. But that's a period of time where the kids begin to get loose. They go out every day, very beginning of practice, and it's a chance for them to really focus uh, on a fundamental or skill that day. We, we usually have two or three drills set up each day and we rotate those each day of the week and try to keep it fresh and it gives them a chance to kind of uh, get acclimated, get their minds clear and get ready to go. We then join together all the positions that come together from pre-practice and they join in together in what is called what we call SGR. And SGR stands for Screens, Gadgets, and Reverses. Now that's a period of time every day. We've broken it down to where we run two screens a day one gadget play and one reverse. And again, the next day, say on Tuesday, we'll pick two other screens, another gadget play, another reverse. And we just try to go through some timing on that. Some days that's against a full 11, some days it's against just a secondary with linebackers, depending on what we want to do or what we want to accomplish. And sometimes we do that just against air. But it's a chance to work a little trickery during the week and uh, kind of work some timing out. We go to our change of pace next. Our change of pace offense for us is an eye formation, double tight with a wing. Uh, we use that during inclement weather conditions. We use it during short yardage situations, goal line, and we practice that every day. We have a small play package for that, and we try to go out and, and work on that, work on some blocking schemes, uh, work on our timing. And you'll notice out to the side of some of these, we've got a T in blue, and what we're talking about here, that T stands for tempo for us. We want to make sure if there's a T outside a segment of practice, we're going to try to be in an up-tempo situation, getting as many reps as we can, as quickly as we can. Pass pro, uh, what comes in next, we have a number of three-step and one-step drop passes. We'll pick one three-step drop and one one-step drop usually per day, and we'll make sure we're moving the ball from the right hash, to left hash, middle of the field, mixing it up, working those particular passing concepts and pushing them hard that day, and uh, going through our progressions and working on our pass protections. And we will sell out our defense on that. We'll have them bring a tremendous amount of pressure, probably even more than we'll see in a game, and try to make this as difficult as we can for our offensive personnel to create a game situation or game type pressure that they're gonna see. We then break it down to individual group, and I know everyone does that or some, some idea of that. One change we made this year is we uh, sometimes break off into special teams individual. And uh, I think that helped our special teams last year. We, a lot of people do it offensive and defensively, but we went to a special teams concept and had kids recovering onside kicks, dropping back on kickoff return and picking up a uh, defender coming down. We worked on punt protection individually during that time, really trying to take our special teams and break it down into a little more individual work. And I think it made a big difference last year for us. We then go to our run game scheme. My offensive line coach kind of takes over that segment. Uh, again, we're going to try to be up tempo, call as many plays as we can in that period of time. Our offensive scheme has really two main runs, but we have some other secondary runs we'll sneak in. And once again, we're going to try to move the ball around different hash marks. I really think that's key to play calling. And uh, we'll try to sneak in some boot and play action pass in this segment also just to keep the defense honest and it's a good chance to really sell those fakes during the run time and be able to spring out and run some, uh, some boot action and so forth. We then go to a special team segment. We try to work two special teams a day, and that varies uh, day by day, but we try to work two special teams specifically. I have a special teams coach, and uh, his job will be to come in there at that time, and he'll have that part organized, and he'll tell me he wants to work punt and maybe kick off on that particular day, and he'll call out that personnel, and for that segment, he gets priority. He's going to get whoever he needs in those segments, and uh, if there are any kids not involved in that segment, then other coaches will pull them off and maybe work some individual drill work, some pass-catching drills until the special team segment's finished. We go to our team period, and again, this varies day by day through the week. 
we're going to practice a lot of game situations. We're going to work some short yardage, some long yardage, some different down and distances. And we're also going to work on different field positions, maybe coming off the goal line, maybe on the goal line or red zone, and take our call sheets and our play scripts and try to work those through uh, in those segments. And again, up tempo, we're a no huddle uh, spread team most of the time. And we're going to be trying to do all of our signaling in at that time and getting acclimated and try to create game situations. And it's also during this time we will make some special teams calls. We'll call out the punt team out of nowhere. We'll sometimes uh, all of a sudden tell them kickoff team and have the kickoff team, you know, come out and line up and kick the ball off, keeping those kids and keeping their heads into what we're doing at that time of practice. We call this last segment finish, and finish is where the coaches, I'm sure like in most programs, have a chance to talk or say something to the kids every day, uh, maybe focus on a, an idea, a philosophy we're trying to press on the kids, maybe focus some concerns here and uh, any business that we might have as far as team meal times and so forth. At that time when practice ends, we do have two final segments that vary from kid to kid, and one is called post-practice. Uh, post-practice is an after-practice, after we've dismissed, Sometimes kids will stay uh, to correct any mistakes they may have made, ball handling, uh, maybe catching the ball or running a certain route they didn't run well, or maybe just to deal with a disciplinary issue, maybe a um, kid was late for practice or had a detention, this is our chance to maybe uh, show, put a little pressure on him about that. Finally, uh, depending on what night of the week it is, uh, we have different film sessions after that and position meetings. Normally Monday's an offensive day, Tuesday's when our defense uh, usually meets by position, and Wednesday we have a special teams meeting at this time where they can kind of sit down, watch a little film, and, uh, and go through even some things we filmed during the practice that uh, might be concerns or were real positive. So again, this is how we break down our practice schedule. This is uh, pretty much we stick to this throughout the season, and uh, it's been very good to us, and I hope there's something in there that uh, benefits your program as well. Thank you. Ready? Ready.